Antonio starts right I've now. never seen anything like this. It's something I always hear about in another state, another city, but now that it's hitting my own hometown, home. I kind of feel like we're back in the uh, 1940s. This morning on GMSA, a man in Los Angeles facing federal hate crime charges accused of shooting two Jewish men. What else authorities discovered in your morning headlines? Back here at home, we're tracking three overnight shootings across the Alamo City. What we've been able to learn in just the past few hours. And yeah, taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 36 degrees to start your Saturday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But good morning. It is morning. 6 o'clock. It is Saturday, February 18th. So I'm not going to lie. The sunshine, very deceiving because it's beautiful out. You walk outside, was, the wind just hits it you. It was still very cold. Yeah. I spent a lot of time outside yesterday and I was, I was pretty bundled. Yeah. Even while we, I, I did a run and walk and I was still, still chilly. All yeah, right. guys, you know, we are not going to have as much wind today as we had yesterday, but it's still going to be a day where you'll want to keep the jacket with you all day long. Temperature is going to be struggling to get out of the 50s today, even with uh, plenty of sunshine out there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the neighborhoods around San Antonio. At the airport, it's 36 degrees above freezing at Stinson near Kelly Field, just at, nearly at freezing and below freezing in Converse. Now, in the next hour or so, we're going to see these temperatures drop by another degree or or two, so it is entirely possible for us to reach freezing at the airport. It's well below freezing, though, up in the hill country. Kerrville at 26, Fredericksburg at 26 as well. Some clouds have moved into the Rock Springs area where it's freezing 32 degrees. And increasing clouds is going to be the story today. You'll notice those cirrus clouds, although we've got a bit of a weekend whiplash. So today, cool 59 degrees. Tomorrow, though, we're going to be 75. That's the forecast high, so much warmer, about a 16 degree difference from today to tomorrow. So uh, all in all, if you're looking for a day where you won't need the jacket, tomorrow's a good one for outdoor activities. Coming up, we'll be talking about this weather whiplash. And of course, I'll get you ready for next week too in just a few minutes, Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating a shooting just outside a bar on the city's southeast side. GMSA's Alyssa Cole is live near the parking lot where it happened. So Alyssa, what do we know so far? Good morning. Yes, I'm here on Pecan Valley Drive near South Cross and just across the way, this parking lot behind me. That's where the shooting happened in that parking lot of Billy's Bar 47. Now, here's what we know from police. They say a group of people were in a fight inside the bar, Billy's Bar 47. We haven't been told how many people were in that fight in that group as well, but we do know the fight escalated outside of the bar and into the parking lot. Once that happened, that's when police say people pulled out firearms and they begin to, of course, pull the trigger. Shots were rang out, but there were over 20 shots fire and two men were hit. Now, the people responsible for injuring those two men left the scene before police arrived. So this means they do not have a description of the suspect. So, of course, they're asking people who may know who those people are to, of course, send in a tip to Crime Stoppers. The two men were said to be in stable conditions and they were taken to a nearby hospital. Reporting live on the east side, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Topping your morning headlines, a man now behind bars in Los Angeles, and he's facing federal hate crime charges, accused of targeting and shooting two Jewish men. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, prosecutors are revealing what police say the suspect told them and what they found in his car. I've never seen anything like this. It's something I always hear about in another state, another city, but now that it's hitting my own hometown, home, right? I kind of feel like we're back in the uh, 1940s. A Los Angeles area community on edge after two Jewish men were shot near synagogues this week. Prosecutors say for one reason. An individual motivated by anti-Semitism, hatred for people in the Jewish community, committed two tremendously horrible acts, targeting individuals because of their Jewish faith. On Friday, the U.S. District Attorney's Office filing federal hate crime charges against 28-year-old Jamie Tran. Appearing in court Friday night, a judge ordered he remain in custody. The first shooting happened Wednesday. Tran is accused of shooting a man in his 40s in the back as he left morning prayer. Then the next day, about a block away, police say Tran shot a man in his 70s who was leaving another synagogue. Both men survived.
Prosecutors say Tran has a history of making anti-Semitic comments. He was captured Thursday in the Coachella Valley, and police say an AK-style rifle and a handgun were found in his vehicle. According to the criminal complaint, Tran stated that he had looked up a kosher market on Yelp and decided to shoot someone in the area of the market and said he knew the victims he shot were Jewish because of their headgear. Anti-Semitism has no place in Los Angeles, no place in our country. Jewish organizations say harassment and violence toward Jewish people is on the rise across the country. The 200% increase in reported incidents over the past couple of years um, and an increasing rate of, the, of that increase over the, over the past couple of months. A Los Angeles area rabbi encouraging the community not to let this keep them from Shabbat services. If convicted, Tran faces life in prison. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. The suspected shooter who allegedly killed six people in Mississippi on Friday is now charged with first-degree murder. So police say 52-year-old Richard Crum is being held without bond, and one of the victims is his ex-wife. Six people were killed at three separate locations in a small town about 30 miles outside of Memphis. One of the victim's husband was also injured during that rampage. And Ohio families near the site of that huge train derailment that happened two weeks ago, they're still concerned about their health. Some families complaining of rashes, sore throats, nausea, and headaches. That uh, follows the February 3rd disaster. Hundreds of people had to be evacuated from their homes after that train crash triggered a massive fire and a lot of concerns about hazardous fallout. Five days later, residents were told they could go back to home after air tests showed no dangerous readings. Ohio's governor says medical experts from the U.S. Health Department, they're actually set to arrive next week to provide additional help and support. In New Jersey, a woman says she escaped her kidnapper after being held hostage for a year. 57-year-old James Barillo Jr. is facing a string of charges, including first-degree kidnapping and aggravated assault. The woman says he took her on a year-long nightmare that spanned several states. It started as a voluntary relationship, but eventually turned violent. Barillo was arrested February 7th in New Jersey. Time now, 6.07, 36 degrees now. Still ahead on GMSA, there's a new app out there that's challenging Amazon as one of the most popular shopping apps in the U.S. And go Spurs, go after the break. Spurs rookie Jeremy Sohan putting on a show at the All-Star Weekend in Utah. Only Spur representation this All-Star Weekend. Just saying we have highlights from the Rising Stars Challenge. Another cold start to the another day. One. An another one. 36 degrees at 607. Sarah Spivey said it's going to be a pretty chilly day. She'll have our weekend forecast when we come back. After a night off bull riding, back in action Friday night at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. And take a look, here's Tyler Bingham on board Skimwalker. First cowboy to go all eight seconds, earning 75 points. He actually stayed on for 14 seconds. And then here's the final ride of the night. Clayton Savage, what a name. On board William James George. Savage going the distance. Then after bucking the cowboy off, William James George sends one of the bullfighters. Cody Webster up in the air. Spin cycle, he's okay, so we can show the highlights. That's after a 75-point ride, meaning Bingham and Savage tied for first place. Go Spurs, go Spurs rookie. Jeremy Sohan taking part in the Jordan Rising Stars Challenge last night in Salt Lake City, Utah. Sipping off NBA All-Star Weekend. Four teams played with two winners advancing to the final. First to 40 moves on. Check out Jeremy driving Monster Slam 2 with six points. His team, Team Jokum, won 40 to 32. They faced Team Pow in the final. First to 25 wins the title, and Pow's team takes care of business 25-20 on a game-winning three. Sohan only had one point in the final. 
He did score from the free throw line. And we love the one-handed free throw. I'm just saying, everyone should try it. It's not that great. So looking ahead, All-Star Weekend continues tonight. 7 o'clock, we have the Skills Challenge. My favorite is the three-point contest. Slam dunk contest as well. All-Star Game itself, Sunday night at 7.30. You can watch all the events on TNT. Max, can you slam dunk? No. So pre so there's like a pre- Well, you hurt yourself. I have two lives. Pre-Achilles, post-Achilles. Okay, pre-Achilles, could you slam dunk? I could touch rim. That's still mm. not a slam dunk. It's not a slam dunk. <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. <Sam. laughs> yeah. You still can't yeah. dunk. <laughs> on a nine or nine and a half foot rim, I did dunk. Wow. I know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That I, was the I exuberance am, I needed. Honestly. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. Sarah Spivey, can you dunk? You know what? I definitely can't. Okay. I mm -hmm. am five foot two yeah. on a good day. Well, you know. Can't dunk. Same. Can't dunk. That's the way it is. Mosey bugs. Never but here's had a dreams slam of dunk dunking. forecast. <laughs> look at that transition. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look outside with live cam. It is cold. It's 36 degrees at the airport. But we are seeing temperatures much colder elsewhere. 26 in Kerrville, 31 in Hondo, 32 Rock Springs, 38 in Del Rio, 34 in Pleasanton, 33 in New Braunfels, and 36 in Gonzales. As we get closer to San Antonio and the neighborhood views, you can see that there are a lot of areas that are dealing with temperatures is below freezing even around San Antonio like in Converse 31 29 in Rio Medina good morning in Bernie it's 27 degrees 28 in Bolverde and it's 25 in Kerrville here's some good news though this morning is the coldest will be in the mornings over the next few days so you won't have to deal with a morning freeze through at least the next seven to ten days by Monday and Tuesday our morning lows are going to be in the 60s we're not even going to get up to 61 or 63 today for the high temperature. So quite a warm up in the morning hours coming up in just a bit. Now, as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast for the day today, notice outside right now skies are clear. We're going to be seeing clear skies for most of the morning. However, after 10 o'clock, we're going to be looking at increasing clouds. You'll notice those height thin cirrus clouds increasing in from the west. It'll be still in the upper 40s by 11 52 at noon. So a cool day in the afternoon will really only top off near 59 degrees for the high temperature. Now here's something uh, that's good for us and winds are not going to be as strong as they have been the last couple of days. We'll have winds from the south at about five to ten miles per hour. Here's a look at highs in your neighborhood. Upper 50s around San Antonio, 59 New Braunfels, 59 in Hondo, mid 50s in the hill country, 55 degrees. Our average high temperature this time of year is 68, so we're going to be about 10 degrees cooler than that. It's going to be 60 in Eagle Pass, 59 in Del Rio, 64 in Catula, and 64 in Beeville. Here's a look at the weather set up again you can see that those clouds are already starting to increase from the west as we zoom out a little bit more we've got some pacific moisture moving in even some snowfall for parts of west texas near el paso now we are not going to see any of that precipitation today we're still seeing high pressure dominate over a san antonio and a good portion of the eastern part of the united states as well cold core of air temperatures are below freezing for a good portion of the nation including good portions of texas as well because of that high, but as that high moves off to the east, winds around a high pressure system move in a clockwise fashion. So it's dry right now, but watch as we head to tomorrow, we'll start to see our winds turn around to the southeast so that by Monday it is going to be humid. You're going to notice the humidity by Monday and high temperatures are going to warm up too. tomorrow. 75 for the high temperature, so much warmer, more pleasant day tomorrow, but you'll really start to feel the humidity Monday and Tuesday when highs will be in the 80s. Beyond that, there's only a small chance, 20% for an isolated shower Tuesday into Wednesday as a front moves through. But behind that front, it's going to be windy on Ash Wednesday. We'll have wind gusts of up to about 35 miles per hour from the west, highs in the 80s. Then by Thursday and Friday, less humidity, not necessarily cool, but less humidity with highs only in the 70s. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to be talking about how dry it is. We're going to take a look at the drought and a potential shift away from La Nina. I'll tell you what that means for our weather pattern in just a bit. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Yep. Thanks, Sarah. 617, 36 degrees out. Coming up before 630, one of the OGs of rap is being immortalized in the same place his music brought hip-hop to the mainstream. How Ice T is being honored in your morning spotlight. And up next, checking on the weekend gas prices in and around San Antonio before you hit the roads later today.
Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, six, six, fireball eight, daily four, five, eight, nine, six, fireball five. Your cash five, 12, 15, 24, 32, 35. Did you play? It's too low. What is that? Below 100 million. Ah, okay. <laughs> Do you have like those notifications? Like, it's above 100 million. No, I drive on 35 every single day. I, I see the sign. <laughs> if you did play, here are your Mega Millions of Oh, wait, it is above 100 now? Two, 33, Breaking 38, <laughs> 57, 70, big number 13, Mega Pirate 3. Good luck. We'll be right back. In your consumer headlines, it wasn't too long ago when Sheen, the Chinese online store that offers cheap clothing and accessories, was all the rage. But now a competitor is giving it a run for its money, literally. So you probably saw the commercial for it, Timu, introduced to Americans during the Super Bowl. It's a Boston-based online retailer owned by a Chinese social commerce company, of course. They're offering everything from home goods to apparel to electronics at low prices. Was this the Clueless commercial with Alicia uh, Silverstone? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, maybe it was. I don't know. All right, so for example, a pair of wireless earphones cost about $9. The company's app is one of the most downloaded in the country with 11 million active users. All right, so if you're like most Americans, you're paying about the same for gas this last week. The national average for gas is $3.42. That's 12 cents more than a month ago, but 9 cents less than this time last year. So here in San Antonio, Gas Buddy reports the lowest price is $2.55 at the Texaco on Nacogdoches Road on the northeast side near Live Oak. And Samsung launching its new Galaxy S23 phone just yesterday. It's promoting a new security feature. It says their phone can stop a malicious image sent through a text from compromising the rest of your phone. The S23 also comes with a fancier camera, faster processor, and all the upgrades you can expect in a new phone. I saw something the other day, mm -hmm. kind of tangentially related. The Apple phone that folds, not out of the question. Wait, it's happening? It might be happening. Why do we need to fold this? Well, you know, Samsung has like a foldable phone. I know. So Apple's like, if you can do it, we can do it. Hmm. Anything you can do, I can do better. Okay. <laughs> I'm now at 623, 36 degrees. Just ahead, Nintendo fans are rejoicing after Super Nintendo World opened its doors yesterday, where you'll have to go to see it in your morning spotlight. In your morning spotlight, the original gangster of rap is being immortalized on the West Coast. Ice-T finally getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, honored in the category of recording. Ice-T, obviously known for his contributions to rap, also rock and roll with his Grammy award-winning side project, Body Count. And of course, a lot of fans know him as a TV star in television's longest running primetime drama, Law & Order SUV, his star sits near John Denver and Herbie Hancock. Meanwhile, Super Nintendo World just opened its doors Friday at Universal Studios in California. Developers are promising an immersive experience for fans of the popular video game. Many are excited for rides like Mario Kart's and Bowser's Challenge. They're using augmented reality to bring the characters from the video games into the ride experience. Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Yeah. Over here. N64. Oh, for sure. I might Mario just go Kart. for nostalgia purposes. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You know. Who's your Mario Kart character? Um, Donkey Kong. Oh. Because I could run people over. But that's because I'm a small person in real life. Yeah. You know? Donkey Kong was always the slowest. I don't care. Oh my God. That's exactly what my brother would you be play like. Play to win the game. <laughs> Time now 627, 36 degrees out. All right. Still ahead at 630, we have the latest on those three shootings across San Antonio. What police are saying about suspects and possible charges. And a terrifying situation to tell you about a UIW student athlete accused of trying to kidnap a child. The bizarre story that's sending shockwaves across the college community. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Just about 6.30 this morning, it is February 18th, and I gotta say, we got a lot to talk about today. We do, so we'll get to Sarah in just a moment, but first, we're tracking three overnight shootings across San Antonio. Right now, San Antonio police investigating a shooting outside a bar on the city's southeast side near I-37. GMSA's Alyssa Cole is live near the parking lot where it happened. Alyssa, what's the name of the bar, and is anyone there now? Well, you all, the name of that bar is called Billy's Bar. 
47 and it looks like there are some people there we've seen a little activity throughout the morning of people pulling in and out of the parking lot but not too much and i am here on pecan valley drive near south cross and that parking lot again is just right there behind me that's where that incident happened here's what we know police say a group of people were in a fight at billy's bar 47 we haven't been told how many people were in that group how many people were a part of the fight but we do know it did escalate outside of the bar and into the parking lot. Once that happened, people were outside and firearms were taking out were taken out and of course police tell us more than 20 shots were fired. People were startled in this area. Actually a few moments before this uh, live shot when you all tossed to me, someone actually came over and discussed with us how much of the issue it is hearing the gunshots in this area and across the way over there, Billy Bars 47. Now two men were hit during that gunfire exchange or gunfire and the people responsible for injuring those two men left the scene before police could arrive. So they do not have a description of those suspects. If you have any information, you are encouraged to call call Crime Stoppers with San Antonio Police Department. The two men that were hit, they were taken to a nearby hospital and they are said to be in stable condition. But for now, reporting live on the east side, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Another shooting to tell you about. A 17-year-old in the hospital this morning after being shot in the arm by a suspected drive-by shooting. So it happened just after 11 last night. This is the 2300 block of Saunders Avenue. That's the city's west side. San Antonio police tell us the victim was in her living room at the time of the shooting, taken to the hospital. She is expected to be okay. Right now, investigators are reviewing several ring cameras in the neighborhood, trying to figure out who is responsible. And two people are claiming to be the victims of an overnight shooting outside of apartment homes on the city's south side. A 17-year-old was shot after 3 this morning at the Mission Del Rio apartment homes on VFW Boulevard. San Antonio police say the teen was shot in the parking lot after getting into a fight with another male. The victim was taken to the hospital where he's expected to be okay. All right, time now, 634, 36 degrees out. We saw Alyssa out there. She had two coats on because that's just how cold it is. It, it's pretty chilly out. Uh, Sarah, bef I think you have something really I special, do. though, to show because our oh, viewers. No. We did put Max on blast about oh, not being able to dunk. And in typical goodness. Max fashion, he sent me this video <laughs> to prove that he I can. I love how he had it archived. So uh, here so we go. Just is Jimmy that a, butler is that, a, is that a child's rim? Uh, How I, tall is that? Right? Is it? Oh, we can rewind <laughs> and whatnot. Again, yeah. Um, so this was yeah, actually yeah. in response to my brother Boom. the other day. He he is taller than me. Leo is about <laughs> six one, six two for purposes of our conversation. <laughs> And he said he couldn't dunk, so I sent him the video. Wow. Wait, how tall was the rim? We didn't get oh, We don't ask questions we don't want answers to. Sarah, <laughs> okay, how's the weather Max, out there? It is cold out there, just like that dunk. Ice cold. All oh. right, temperatures are well below freezing in some places. 28 degrees in Bulverde, 27 in Bernie, 29 in Rio Medina. It's 27 in Bandera, 27 in Kerrville, and 24 in Comfort. Now, around San Antonio, generally seeing temperatures above freezing, but in some neighborhoods, like uh, near JBSA Randolph, temperatures are below freezing and we do have a couple like about an hour or so or uh, more of uh, before we see the sunrise and so temperatures could drop by another degree or two. Now if you're planning on going to the rodeo today it's going to be a great day for that. You're going to want the jacket though throughout the day because temperatures will be in the 50s. We'll struggle to get out of the 50s. 59 degrees for the high temperature around noon it'll be in the low 50s. South winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour in a cool evening with temperatures in the low 50s after sunset. All right here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast today, not as windy as the last few days. Again, increasing clouds throughout the day, mainly those high thin cirrus clouds. Tomorrow's going to be really pleasant. Warmer temperatures will be in the 70s. We'll still have low humidity and in the week ahead, Unfortunately, very little chance for rain. Now we are in exceptional drought, and one of the reasons for that has been because this has been our third winter in La Nina conditions. We'll talk a little bit about the potential to change to El Nino soon and what that would mean for our uh, upcoming year. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a bit. For now though, let's go ahead and check uh, with Steven on the roads. Looks like we've got some closures over the weekend. 
Expect road closures to continue well into the early days of March and of course throughout the weekend. Let's talk about what will be taking place here along I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. Now, bridge work will actually begin Friday, February 17th. That will take us all the way up until Saturday, February 18th. Begins at 9 in the evening and should end around 12 in the afternoon. Expect to see a full closure of the eastbound main lanes right there at File Road. Now, TxDOT also reports that we will continue to see asphalt work taking place along 281 on the north side of San Antonio. That will take place Saturday, February 18th. It does begin at 9 in the morning and hopefully should wrap around 3 in the afternoon. Expect to see an alternating lane closure in both directions right there at Wilderness Oak. All right, one last jump here. Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. We have continued to see that utility work take place. Should wrap on Thursday, March 9th. So pack your patience. 9 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon is when that work will take place. Expect to see a single lane closure on the southbound frontage road from Marbach Road to Pilar Drive. Now you can scan the QR code that is now on your screen that will take you to our KSAT traffic page. Full list of closures is listed there, so plan your commute ahead of time. Thank you, Stephen. New details this morning on a 19 year old who looked like she had a bright future, but now she's behind bars. UIW student athlete Myraja Rankin is accused of stabbing a woman in an effort to allegedly take her three year old son. Rankin is a freshman on the Cardinals track team. According to a police report, she tried to take a three year old boy from an apartment complex in the 3200 block of Nacogdoches Road. When the 28 year old mother fought for her child, Rankin is said to have stabbed her in the forearm twice with a screwdriver. In the struggle, Rankin dropped the child and ran to hide in this first floor apartment. Cops came in and they were like with the, with the hand on like this and saying, you need to leave, you know, we want to help you come out with your hands up. So you just heard from Omar Ortega. He wasn't home at the time, but his wife and mother-in-law were there. He tells Case that he's thankful no one in his family was hurt. SAPD hasn't provided a motive for the alleged crime, but you can read this full story on KSAT.com. Bear County Sheriff's deputies arresting a suspect in a shooting that ended with a Brennan High School student shot and killed last Sunday. Sheriff Javier Salazar says 19-year-old Jose Medina accused of shooting and killing 15-year-old Ted Johnson Jr. According to the sheriff, the victim walked up to an SUV, spoke to Medina, and after they exchanged words, Medina allegedly shot Johnson. He then collapsed and died a short time later. Now, the sheriff says deputies found video of the incident, got a description of the vehicle, a vehicle that the suspect was in. Officers were able to canvas the area in between our, our patrol deputies and our, and our CID investigators. They were able to canvas the area and they were able to find some video footage from nearby that showed a light colored SUV uh, at, right there around the time of the shooting. The sheriff added a handgun, cell phone, and vape cartridges all found next to Johnson when investigators searched the area. Medina now facing charges of murder, tampering with evidence, and possession with intent to deliver. Looking ahead, you can see the artwork of a local artist who left his mark all over San Antonio. Jesse Trevino passed away from cancer on Monday, and his work will be on display later today at the Central Public Library on Soledad. In honor of his memory, the library staff have been inviting visitors into the foyer of the building's auditorium since Wednesday. Today is the last day that exhibit will be open of his work that's going to be in the foyer. Library staff tell KSAT you can go from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. This is on the southeast side of the Central Library. Time now 640, 36 degrees out. So to come at 630, a dramatic freeway rescue in California. Look at that dog on the freeway there. How a nurse was able to save a puppy that was dodging traffic. Oh, how terrifying. And up next, schools hoping to help students with later starts to the school day. We're going to take a look at why in just a few moments. Do you remember what time your high school started? I think it was nine. It was late. Oh, that is late. Yeah, we had like all kinds of practices and yeah, it was not fun. 36 degrees at 640. It's going to be a chilly weekend. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Well, this morning, it's no secret that sleep deprivation is connected to bad health. Oh, that's good. However, a new study says consistency is key to staying healthy with sleep. Sarah Spivey's shaking her head. Scientists found that having different sleep schedules led to a higher risk of plaque in the arteries. This story, Ugh. why did you do this, Colin, our producer? And that means higher risk of heart attack strokes and other conditions. 
cool. All right, well, <laughs> speaking of sleeping, we all know these days sleep is a precious commodity, as you just heard from the story we just told you about. That's right, and more school districts are taking note, looking to start later so students can reap the benefits of a little extra sleep. ABC's Derek Dennis has more on that and some troubling new data on teenage girls. <laughs> This morning, a growing effort to get students more sleep. School districts now considering later start times to boost student productivity and health. We have like a scheduled sleep in once a month maybe, and I feel like like everyone's progress yeah. on those days is like a lot more efficient and concentrated. I think it helped me as a student because I'd get more rest and I'd feel more energized. Ridgewood, New Jersey school board voted last night in favor of changing high school hours to start no earlier than 8.20 a.m. instead of the current start time of 7.45. Approval for implementation of the later start initiative at the Ridgewood High School. Citing health studies that say kids need nine hours of sleep a night. Even teachers support the change. They would tell you that that first period is tough. Last year, California became the first state to mandate later school start times with middle and high school starting no earlier than 8 or 8.30 a.m. respectively. Massachusetts and New York are considering similar measures. Meanwhile, as more schools focus on students' well-being, mental health is a growing concern. A new CDC report warns teen girls are experiencing record levels of sadness, violence, and suicide risk. Three out of five are feeling persistently sad or hopeless hopeless, up 36% in the last decade. Findings also confirm ongoing trauma among lesbian, gay, bisexual, and questioning youth. These data are hard to hear and should result in action. As for starting classes later, critics say that means ending classes later, which affects the scheduling of after-school activities and other events. But supporters argue it's a fair trade-off. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. All right, well, back here at home, 646, 36 degrees, Sarah. Please tell me it's going to get warmer. It is tomorrow. Yeah, Max's oh, parents tomorrow. are in town. They are. We want to walk around and it's, you know. They came, but it was cold. They came from the northeast <laughs> and they were like, we're going to come to Texas, enjoy the sunshine and the warm weather. Well, the 50s should feel fine for them. That's fair. Okay. Yeah, so that's tomorrow like spring will be in the for them. 70s. Nice. So, yeah, tale of two seasons this weekend, winter today and spring tomorrow. I do want to start, though, by taking a look at the drought monitor across Texas. Do you see that bullseye? in Texas, that's right over San Antonio. Cool. So we have got extreme and exceptional drought all across uh, South Central Texas. And again, a bullseye right over San Antonio, North San Antonio, Holotus, Bulverde, Bernie, Sisterdale, Kerrville, Bandera, Canyon Lake in the worst kind of drought, exceptional drought still ongoing around uh, the San Antonio metro area and into the hill country. And as we look at our rain chances this week, it does not look good. The only chance for rain that we have is Wednesday in the morning hours. Otherwise, it's going to be dry, and even then, it's only a 20% chance for an isolated shower. Not only will the upcoming week be dry, but when we look at the Climate Prediction Center's outlook for March, it looks to have good chances to be below average as far as the rain goes. It doesn't mean we're not going to see rain in March. It's just going to be below average, and we need an abundance of rain to help us out with the current drought situation. Situation. So why on earth have we been so dry? Well, this winter was our third consecutive winter with a La Nina weather pattern going on across the Pacific Ocean. Now, usually in a La Nina winter, we're drier than average, and this has been our third consecutive La Nina winter. Here's some good news. We're saying bye bye to La Nina. We've already entered a more neutral weather pattern as La Nina has weakened significantly. And in order to have a wetter than average fall, or winter, it helps to be in an El Nino weather pattern. And that is possible. Transition to El Nino is possible in the summer, and that could potentially lead to a wetter fall or winter. There's a big question mark there because there's still a lot to consider, but it's at least something that we can keep our hopes up for. As we look outside right now, beautiful sunrise as we're starting to see those cirrus clouds move into place. It's going to be pretty nice early this morning. It's 36 degrees with winds from the northeast at about five miles per hour, a bit of a wind chill. Otherwise, it's freezing in Bulverde, 28 degrees, 30 at Rio Medina, 30 in Seguin, 31 in Honda.
Hondo, even a JBSA Randolph, it's 31 degrees. 26 in Kerrville. Good morning in Bandera, it's 27 degrees. A wider view here in Del Rio, 38, 38 in Catula, 36 in Gonzales. Now, as we look at our weather setup, again, you can see very clearly those clouds are moving in from the west, and we're going to see those cirrus clouds throughout the day today, partly cloudy skies, increasing cloud cover. Temperatures are going to be in the 40s for most of the morning, 45 by 10, 52 at noon, so a cool day altogether, 59 for the high temperature, struggling to get out of the 50s. You're going to want that jacket with you throughout the day. Now, it will not be as windy, though, as it has been the last couple of days. We'll only see winds from the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. In your neighborhood around San Antonio, it'll be 57 in Lotus, 55 in Bolverde, 59 in Hondo, 58 in Bandera, 55 in Kerrville. We'll be running about 10 degrees below the seasonal average of 68. Now, it's really dry outside right now. Dew points are in the 20s. That is chapstick weather. But as we look at the humidity, we'll expect it to increase. Uh, by Monday and Tuesday, dew points will be in the 60s, which is noticeably humid. Tomorrow, it'll still be pleasant outside, but humidity will be a little higher. So with the increase in the humidity, temperatures are also going to increase tomorrow, 75 for the high. So Max, when you're out and about with your parents, tomorrow is going to be a good day for that. You might have to deal with some patchy fog early in the morning. Uh, tomorrow we will be in the 80s on Monday and Tuesday with noticeable humidity. And then by Wednesday, a front moves through. That really doesn't cool us down too much. It does, however, make it windy and less humid for Ash Wednesday. Notice, too, that in the mornings, temperatures are going to be well above freezing. So I don't anticipate another light freeze for at least the next 10 days. We'll have to see beyond that. Okay. I'm waiting for spring. I'm waiting for like that that first week of March, can I start planting? Can I start revitalizing my garden? It's going to be interesting to see if this morning was our last freeze of the season. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 651, 36 degrees out. After the break, a wild story involving a cat found 1,400 miles away from home. It's like Milo and Otis. Why the name of the cat might have played a role in the journey back home. All right, let's take a look out at the roadways. Look at a gorgeous sunrise across San Antonio. A lot of people on the roads there. Highway 90 at I-35. Look, everything seems to be running smoothly out there, but if anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. Good morning and welcome back. So a cat missing from Miami, Florida, found this week by someone in Kansas. Here's the thing, that is more than 1,400 miles away from the lost cat's home. So this orange cat named Lucky had been missing for two years. But thanks to a microchip, the Prairie Village Police Department in Kansas eventually identified the owner in Miami. The police department will provide services to Lucky until his family can make arrangements to get him back to Florida. Did you ever see the movie Milo and Otis? I don't think so. Where it's like an orange cat and a pug go on a cross-country adventure. That's what it reminds me this of. This is about the, the microchip. Yeah. All right, and a dramatic dog rescue unfolding on a busy freeway in Southern California. I hate watching video like this. So a nurse was among the Good Samaritans who stopped to save the puppy. Glendale nurse Amber try, uh, tried to make that rescue when the dog jumped into her car. She was just getting off her 12 hour oh, shift as a cardiac nurse. And she happens to have four rescues of her own at her family's house. Her dad, Mark, was at home watching the drama unfold <laughs> on live TV with no idea that his daughter was there until he got the call. So she goes, I rescued a dog on the freeway. I go, no way. I just watched somebody rescue a dog on the freeway. <laughs> She's lucky to be alive. Oh my gosh, so the vet scanned the dog for a microchip, but no luck. She said she's hoping to re reunite the puppy with her owner, but for now, she's taking all the kisses she can. Oh, so five rescue dogs now. She's a champion. Absolutely, time now, 6.56, 36 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, it's 36 degrees in San Antonio, but below freezing in pockets around San Antonio. We'll be in the 40s by 10, 50s this afternoon with a high temperature only near 59. A cool day today, but it will be warmer tomorrow, 75. A beautiful day tomorrow after some patchy morning fog. Warm on Monday and Tuesday in the 80s and noticeably humid. Less humid by Wednesday and windy behind a front. Unfortunately, no major rain chances for us, guys. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. We'll see you guys at 8. Live from KSAT 12.
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. 37 degrees to start your morning. Sarah Spivey is going to join us with your full forecast in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. 8 o'clock this Saturday. It is February 18th. Thank you so much for good starting morning. your morning with us. So last couple of days, have you been out and about? Or are you sheltering inside? It's cold. No, I, I braved it. It, nice. it was cold. It was sunny and beautiful, but it was cold. Also beautiful, the sunrise this yes. morning. I didn't I never follow you to the roof. Yeah, and I don't know why I did it. Maybe because there's no humidity outside. No, I think we were in casual conversation. I just started going and, and I just, you were just kind of and following I just me along. Followed. Just and followed. Sarah, it's beautiful out there, but today are we going to still have those chilly temps? Yeah, you know, we are going to still be cool today. High temperature only in the 50s, but unlike yesterday, we won't have to deal with the wind. The wind is really what what made it feel even colder yesterday outside. As for temperatures right now, many of us got down to freezing in around San Antonio, but the airport technically above freezing 37 degrees. It's 40 at Stinson Kelly Field. 41 Converse area got down to 31 this morning, south 34. It's even colder up in the hill country where temperatures are below freezing. Kerrville 28 degrees, Fredericksburg 27 and Bernie also at 28. Now today again, 59 degrees and cool. Uh, if you don't really like the cooler weather, tomorrow's going to be your day. We'll be at 75 warmer. Now we are going to be seeing plenty of clouds out there, not only today, but also tomorrow, but still a 16 degree difference in the weather from today to tomorrow. That is a nice weekend weather whiplash for you. So coming up, we're going to talk about how it'll even get warmer in the week ahead, and we'll talk about when we expect those winds to pick up as well. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Two people are in the hospital this morning after being shot outside of a bar on the city's east side. This happened around two in the morning. San Antonio police say a fight broke out inside Billy's Bar 47. That's on the 4700 block of Pecan Valley Drive. The fight escalated outside when 20 rounds were fired and two people were shot. Both victims were taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police are still searching for the suspect. San Antonio man now behind bars arrested for manslaughter six months after a crash ended with one woman dead. 50 year old Brian Kendall Young arrested yesterday for a crash that happened on Highway 281 back on August 1st. San Antonio police tell us Young was driving a U-Haul going southbound. That's when he hit the guardrail, rolled the vehicle over. The front passenger died as a result of her injuries. Now, Young initially said that the woman was driving, but a witness told police he saw Young behind the wheel. A man charged with the 1999 murder of his wife had been sentenced to a 20 years in prison as part of a plea deal. Roy Hernandez was arrested and charged in 2017. His wife, Deidre Salinas, disappeared in 1999. It would take investigators six years to find her body, but there wasn't any evidence to charge Hernandez until 2017. He was expected to go to trial last year, but was diagnosed with terminal cancer and the case was reset. Yesterday, Hernandez accepted a 20 year plea deal on the murder charge. He must serve half before he is eligible for parole. In your morning headlines, South Korea's military announcing North Korea firing at least one ballistic missile into the sea. So South Korea's military said North Korea fired one suspected long range missile from the North Korean capital towards the sea just a day after it threatened to make strong measures against South Korea and the United States over their joint military exercises. North Korea's foreign ministry threatened with unprecedentedly strong actions against their rivals after South Korea announced a series of planned military exercises with the U.S. And these exercises are aimed at sharpening South Korean response to the North's growing threats. The recovery operation for the suspected Chinese spy balloon has ended. According to a statement from the U.S. military on Friday, the debris from the balloon was taken to the FBI lab in Virginia for counterintelligence exploitation. U.S. Northern Command said all Navy and Coast Guard vessels have departed the area and all safety perimeters have been lifted. U.S. officials say the balloon was the size of three buses and carried equipment that was capable of collecting signals, intelligence, and taking photos. Well, there's now new data released by the Department of Education that breaks down student debt relief, loan relief applications by congressional district. So according to officials, 
In every district, every congressional district, at least 30 percent of eligible borrowers were approved before the program was blocked in November. But when broken down by average income, the vast majority of applications came from the bottom 80 percent of income of congressional districts. Now, the plan would offer up to $20,000 of individual debt forgiveness to millions and millions of low and middle income borrowers across the country. Now remember, it's stuck up in the courts and the Supreme Court will hear the case challenging the plan's legality later this month. Well, back here at home happening right now, the city of San Antonio's Solid Waste Department hosting a household hazardous waste event and it is free and open to the public. Alyssa Cole joining us live from the Bulky Waste Collection Center. So Alyssa, the event is just getting started, is that right? Yes, this event started just a few moments ago. Yes, this event started just a few moments ago, right at 8 o'clock. I'm at 2755 Rigsby Road for those who are looking to participate in this event. This location, you can see here behind me, a lot of those bins and some of the cars already uh, lined up there. This is where you can drop off the hazardous materials free of charge. This includes items like paint, oil, chemicals, pesticides, batteries, and electronics. Crews here will not accept trash, ammunition, fireworks, or medical waste. You can see cars have already been pulling in. I would say maybe about a handful of cars, maybe seven or eight or so got here just before eight o'clock, but it's already been smooth so far. You can see the crews there already getting items outside of the different vehicles and they're dressed in their hazardous protection material as well. Now, those for you who cannot make it today, this event does run until 12 o'clock here on the south side. If you can't make it today, that's okay. Don't worry. They offer monthly events like this and uh, you could participate in the next one. Here's the thing. The monthly events, those are going to be free as well and they will be listed on our website at ksat.com. All you have to do is log on to our website and search up the free hazardous materials waste event story and it'll pop up there and list it on that article or the different free, free events in case you can't make it out today. Reporting live on the south side, Alyssa Cole, case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Time now, 8.07, 38 degrees out. The Safari Park in West oh. Palm Beach is welcoming a baby chimpanzee and her name has some appealing history to it. We'll swing back after the break. Did you feel good about that one? Pretty good. All right. That was my producer, Caitlin, that wrote that. Okay. Pretty yeah, good. You brought the emphasis, I so felt it's appreciated. It. Oh, sorry. It was MJ. Another who wrote part that. of our team. <laughs> like Give me a shout been, out. It was not Michael Jordan. It was a team member named MJ. It's no, just great. No, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Taking a live look out there. 38 degrees now. We're going to be joined by Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Stay with us. Welcome back. A safari park in Florida welcoming an adorable baby chimpanzee. Meet Lily, born January 28th at Lion Country Safari in West Palm Beach. Her name honors the Tonko Lily Chimpanzee Project, a conservation initiative in Sierra Leone. Now, Lily joins a family of two females, three males, including one-year-old Tonk. Now, staff members say Lily's mom, Juniper, has been proudly showing off her baby, who you can see clearly clinging to her inside the habitat. Lily's birth, a rare and significant situation due to the declining number of chimpanzees in the wild and the low number of births in the population. Well, check this adorable story out. Singer Carrie Underwood has adopted a puppy from South Carolina. The singer shared a picture of the pup on Instagram. She's pretty cute. Her name Aww. is Charlie Underwood. Like Explained she was on a tour stop in Charlotte recently when the dog rescue positive impact brought puppies to her show. Underwood said that Charlie seemed just too good to be true. So she took her home and made her the newest part of the family. That How cute. Adorable. I will say if y'all have been here when Mike and Justin do oh, some yeah. of the, the pet stuff. It, it, melts, is it melts you so difficult because you look and they're so tiny and so cute. And, and they're like, just like, mm. just 
come on home. Yeah. Anyway. We have so many puppies yeah. and uh, adult dogs to adopt here around the city. We really do. Yeah. Check out all those places. But they're a responsibility once you get them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so cold this morning. Mm -hmm. Many areas saw temperatures at or below freezing. Not at the airport, though. At the airport, we stayed above freezing, technically. 37 degrees right now. You can see that some height and cirrus clouds have moved in. We're going to have bright cloud cover today. What do I mean by that? Well, the, the cloud cover will be pretty thin, so we'll see plenty of sunshine through that. Take a look at some of these temperatures right now. It's 28 in Kerrville, 36 in New Braunfels, 40 in Del Rio, 36 in Carrizo Springs, 38 in Kennedy, 38 in Gonzales. As we zoom in closer to San Antonio, all starting to warm up here. Uh, it's 32 right now in Bernie, but it was in the upper 20s just about 30 minutes ago. 32 in Seguin, 28 in Bandera, 38 in Hondo. Good morning near Stinson. It's 40 degrees, 38 in Gonzales. So we got down to near freezing today, this morning, and even below freezing in some places, but you won't have to worry about a morning freeze over the next seven to 10 days. In fact, this is a look at morning lows in the coming days. By Tuesday morning, our morning lows will be in the 60s. We're probably going to struggle to even see 60 degrees today during the afternoon. So a warm up is headed our way. And again, our average last freeze this time of year is right around mm, about the end of February. So we're coming up to about the time where we see our our average last freeze. We'll keep you posted on that. As we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, temperatures in the 40s this morning. By noon, we'll be at 52 degrees. We will not have as much of a wind as we did yesterday. Winds will be from the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy, near 59 this afternoon for the high temperature. Few folks might reach 60 degrees, but it's going to be a cool day and a cool evening too. After the sun sets, temperatures will be falling uh, into the low 50s shortly after sunset. Here's a look at high temperatures in your neighborhood. 59 in Del Rio and in Yavaldi, 59 in Hondo, 62 in Pleasanton, 64 in Catula, 62 Carissa Springs, mid 50s in the Hill Country, 55 Kerrville, 53 Rock Springs, 59 around San Antonio and Seguin. You can see in the weather setup that we are seeing those uh, high thin cirrus clouds moving in here from the west, starting to take over most of south central Texas. Even some uh, wintry precipitation for parts of El Paso, all the way up through uh, near to the Midland Odessa area and into the Panhandle. Now, as for uh, the rest of us around Texas, we're going to stay dry. That's because high pressure is still, still in control. And around this high, that's where most folks are, are chilly this morning. Temperatures all across the nation on the cold side, just near or below freezing with the exception of Miami, which is sitting at a really comfortable 73 degrees this morning. Now that high pressure system, as it moves off to the east, it's going to turn the winds to the southeast. So we're dry right now with low humidity, but as that high moves a little bit more to the east, we'll see our winds turn to the southeast. And starting early tomorrow, we're going to see our humidity increase. You won't really notice the high humidity until about Monday and Tuesday, but it is going to be noticeably humid by Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday around San Antonio. That's going to start a warming trend too. So even though we're going to be near 60 degrees today, tomorrow some 15 degrees warmer, 75 for the high temperature for your Sunday. Sunday is going to be a really nice day tomorrow. A few clouds out there like today. By Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday will be in the 80s. Now one thing to keep in mind is on Monday and Tuesday it's going to be humid, but by Wednesday that'll be a bit more of a dry heat. We'll see lower humidity highs in the low 80s as well, warmer than average for the middle of the week. Let's go through your seven day forecast again today. Uh, pretty cool 59 tomorrow. Some patchy fog is possible in the morning as you're heading to church or just running some early morning errands on Sunday. 75 degrees for the high temperature tomorrow uh, on President's Day. It's going to be 80. Some people have off of work and off of school on that day. A nice day all in all, but a little bit humid, humid on Tuesday as well. And then again, Tuesday night into Wednesday, we expect a front to move through. That's that's really just going to make things windy on Wednesday. We'll have gusts up to 35 miles per hour on Ash Wednesday. Lower humidity as we end out the week. Now, 
Now what a lot of people are thinking, where's the rain? Well, coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk about how it's been very dry, exceptional drought. Reason for that, La Nina. Do we have any chance of getting out of La Nina soon? I'll have those details in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. A good reminder to still water your plants, even though they're dormant right now after the you know winter and the freezes we've had. Yep. You still need to water the roots. So something they should be starting to sprout up about now for good, spring. Good point there, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 817, 39 degrees out. Still ahead, fans of South Korean boy band BTS Whoa. might want to tune into this. Lego has announced their newest BTS Lego set. You know you've made it in life when you get your mm -hmm. own Lego set. True. We'll tell you when it'll be available and for how much. You need a GMSA weekend Lego set. That would be awesome. <laughs> we also have an important recall to tell you about. One that's actually calling attention to Valentine's Day candy sold to Target why it's being pulled off the shelves. We're gonna explain it just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Important recall to tell you about. Packs of chocolate sold at Target for Valentine's Day being recalled due to an allergy risk. The brand Favorite Day Valentine's Milk Chocolate Covered Caramels. They contain tree nuts, which is not noted on the packaging. People who have allergies to tree nuts run the risk of serious or life-threatening allergic reactions if they eat these products. Now they're packed in stand-up pouch bags with the lot number 33822, the best buy date of December 7th, 2023. So far, no illnesses, no bad reactions have been reported. Another popular product is being recalled. Starbucks is recalling 25,000 cases of its vanilla frappuccino drinks for possibly containing pieces of glass in them. So PepsiCo says the cases were shipped nationwide to various retailers. They were not sold at Starbucks cafes. The affected batches have expiration dates on March 8th, Mar May 29th, June 4th, and June 10th. If you have any of these, you're asked to throw them out. You can also call Consumer Relations at 1-800-211-8307, that number on your screen, for any comments or questions. Time now, 822, 39 degrees out. Next, what astronomers, astronomers using the James Webb Telescope Beautiful. to look inside spiral galaxies? Interesting. Welcome back. Astronomers using the James Webb Space Telescope looked inside spiral galaxies Whoa. and saw the beginning stages of emerging stars. The telescope can see the universe in infrared light, which enables it to look through the dust that until now has prevented us from seeing formation, formations of emerging stars. So astronomers will continue to focus on different galaxies, taking images of star formation, offering new insights about the life cycle of stars. Very cool. All right, you know what else is cool? What? Getting your own Lego set. So check this out. The newest Lego set, a tribute to the South Korean boy band and international sensation BTS, created by a pair of Lego fans, actually. Well, one of them, a huge BTS super fan. So the set features all seven band members. You just uses scenes from the video set of their hit single, Dynamite, to jam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Lego Ideas BTS Dynamite set, it is 749 pieces, so it's pretty elaborate to set up. And get this, not cheap, goes on sale in March for $100. How many pieces do you think would be the GMSA weekend Lego set? You know, probably not a lot. We're pretty simple. <laughs> you heard it here first. Sarah Costa, simple. We're Got simple. it. Simple. Time now, 827. Nothing wrong with simple. 39 degrees out. Simple as more. Okay, early morning wake up calls. We get them, but we may not like them. In the oh, next half say. hour, <laughs> what sleep specialists are encouraging to do in order to become a morning person? What time you wake up. You don't want to know. Okay. But I do want to know <laughs> who wins the lottery. What time do today? you wake up, Max? <sighs> We're going to tease ahead. We'll talk about it in a bit. <laughs> Pick three, eight, six, six, fireball, eight, daily four, five, eight, nine, six, fireball five. Are you really going to tell us what time you wake up? I will. Okay. Cash five, 12, 15, 24, 32, 35, mega millions, 2, 33, 38, 57, 70, mega ball 13, mega player, player three. Good luck. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 8.31 this morning. It is February 18th. How have your allergies been? 
just like that. I don't think I really can smell anymore. Yeah. I don't know what it is. That's fair. <laughs> there was some sneezing. So, Sarah Spivey, how does the uh, pollen count look out there? Well, it, I don't don't know what's happening, Sarah, because the pollen <laughs> count looks good. <laughs> I think it's the dust in this studio, oh, not okay. going to lie. Okay. Good. We've got molds and elm out there right now. They're low in the pollen count today. I know that says ash, but it should say elm. That was a typo on my end, so I'll correct that there. So molds and elm are are low. That's it out there. Uh, we really haven't seen mountain cedar since uh, last week, early last week, so I don't think we're going to be seeing any more mountain cedar in the pollen count. Now we are seeing some clouds increase from the west. It's 37 degrees at the airport, still below freezing in Bernie, Bulverde, Kerrville, Comfort, and Bandera. We did forecast that freeze up in uh, parts of the San Antonio in the northern hill country and some of us did see freezing. Otherwise, though, it is cold to start the day 39 in Divine. Now, if you're planning on going to the rodeo today, it's going to be a cool day for any kind of outdoor activities. Temperatures are going to be in the 50s, 52 at noon, 59 for the high temperature, and we'll see partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. Winds, however, will not be as strong as they have been the last few days. Well, winds from the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Temperatures will be in the low 50s after sunset. Here's some things we're going to talk about. So again, not as windy today with increasing cirrus clouds. Tomorrow, though, a really pleasant day. We're going to be warmer in the 70s with low humidity. So winter kind of temperatures today, but spring like tomorrow. And then I do want to take some time and talk about how we're in exceptional drought and how going into La Nina for the third winter has really kept us uh, pretty dry without any rain. We'll talk though about La Nina, how La Nina is coming to an end and what that could potentially mean later on down the line this year for us as far as rainfall is concerned. So the forecast and those details about La Nina coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A 17 year old in the hospital this morning after being shot in the arm by a drive by shooting. So take a look. This all happened just after 11 last night. This is the 2300 block of Saunders Avenue. That's the city's west side. San Antonio police tell us now the victim was just let, sitting in her living room at the time of the shooting. After she was shot, she was taken to the hospital. She is expected to be OK. Right now, though, investigators are viewing several ring cameras in the neighborhood, trying to figure out who is responsible and why this happened. Well, two people are claiming to be the victims in an overnight shooting outside of an apartment on the city's south side. So a 17 year old was shot after three in the morning at the Mission Del Rio apartment homes on VFW Boulevard. San Antonio police say the teen was shot in the parking lot after getting into a fight with another male. The victim was taken to the hospital hospital where he's expected to be OK. Bear County Sheriff's deputies are making an arrest of a suspect they believe is responsible for shooting and killing a Brennan High School student last Sunday. Sheriff Javier Salazar says 19 year old Jose Medina accused of shooting and killing 15 year old Ted Johnson Jr. The sheriff tells us that the victim walked up to an SUV, started speaking to Medina. After an exchange of words, Medina allegedly shot Johnson. He then collapsed and died a short time later. The sheriff says deputies found video of the incident and they got a description of the vehicle that the suspect was in. Officers were able to canvas the area in between our, our patrol deputies and our and our CID investigators. They were able to canvas the area and they were able to find some video footage from nearby that showed a light colored SUV uh, at, right there around the time of the shooting. The sheriff added that a handgun, cell phone and vape cartridges all found next to Johnson when investigators searched the area. Medina now facing charges of murder, tampering with evidence, and possession with intent to deliver. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified 32-year-old Daniel Valladares Fernandez as a victim who was shot and killed in Northeast Bear County. The shooting happened Thursday night on the 7,000 block of Winsford Drive. Bear County deputies say when they arrived at the scene, they found Valladares Fernandez with a gunshot wound. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. His death has been ruled a homicide. So far, no arrests have been made. A 19 year old UIW student athlete, Myraja Rankin, now behind bars after being accused of stabbing a woman in an effort to allegedly take her three year old son. Rankin, a freshman on the Cardinal track team, and according to the police report, she tried taking a three-year-old boy from this apartment complex 
the 3200 block of Nacogdoches Road. The 28-year-old mother of the three-year-old fought for her child. Rankin is said to have stabbed the mother in the forearm twice with a screwdriver. During the struggle, Rankin dropped the child and ran, hiding in the man's first floor apartment. Cops came in and they were like with the, with the hand on like this and saying, you need to leave, you know, if we want to help you, come out with your hands up. So this is Omar Ortega. He wasn't home at the time, but his wife and mother-in-law were. He tells KSAT he is thankful no one in his family was hurt. Uh, investigators still not providing a motive for the alleged crime, but you can read all the details right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, young people stepping up to lead, it's a trend that's been happening more frequently across Texas. The Texas Association of School Boards says young people have always had an interest in joining school boards. And lately, one student at New Braunfels ISD is doing just that. Fallon Cochran, a senior in New Braunfels ISD, is running for an at-large seat on the school board. Now, the team comes from a family of educators and wants to follow in their footsteps. She's running against Bill Lewis, a former educator, and also running against Kimberly Goodwin, an audit manager in the upcoming May elections. She says it's important to have teenagers to have a say in leadership. Younger people are getting more understood and showing that they actually have ideas and they know how to make changes. And so the Texas Association of School Boards welcomes the young energy and new desire by young people to join the board. Michael Valdez, a senior in Edgewood ISD, won a place on their school board as did a teen in another ISD near Amarillo. Now, a consultant with the organization says there's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility that goes into representing an entire district. They should be prepared to um, listen to the community because they really are the voice of the community. They should be prepared to deal with issues where they may not be able to tell people, you know, the whole story because there are laws that say that certain things are confidential. So they should be prepared to participate, but, but to know what the rules are for participation. So people who run for board members should be 18 years old when they take office, a U.S. citizen, and should have lived in the district that they want to represent for more than six months. All right, if you need to get rid of some items, San Antonio's Solid Waste Department hosting a household hazardous waste event free of charge throughout the morning. That's right, this is happening at the Bulky Waste Collection Center. That's where we find Alyssa Cole joining us now. Alyssa, there yes, are some that's exactly items. exactly right. There are items you can and cannot bring. That's a great question, and I'll get to that list in just a moment. But for everyone who's watching right now, the address to the location I am at is 2755 Rigsby Road. Again, that's 2755 Rigsby Road. Rigsby Road. This event did start at 8 a.m. and it's running until 12 o'clock. Now, this is where you can drop off all your hazardous hazardous materials free of charge. And that loose that list that you all were asking about earlier, that includes items like oil, chemicals, paint, electronics, pesticides, batteries. But the crews here, this is what they will not accept. Trash, ammunition, medical waste, medicine, fireworks. And there was a line here earlier. It's pretty open right now. So everyone watching this, if you're considering, hey, you know what? I do have some paint, some oil, have the different things in my garage or at home or even in my small business. You can come on through. It is wide open right now. Plenty of crews here. You'll be in and out. It's actually been a very quick Quick process. You see the different bins there with the orange plastic in the inside. They're getting the job done. They're getting it done quickly. And on the other side of this facility, we actually learned they're also doing the free big bulk pickup uh, drop off as well. They're accepting the big bulk trash. So if you have that at home, maybe as well, or at your parents' home, maybe they don't have access to get to this location. Maybe you can pick that up for them and you can just swing by. All you need is a valid ID and a CPS energy bill on that CPS energy bill. It shows the environmental fee and that's um, pretty much allowing you that access into this area to drop off the big bulk trash or to drop off those chemical materials. So again, this is running until 12 o'clock free of charge. All you need is your ID and the CPS energy bill. And again, free of charge, folks, we did a little research and we found out for the hazardous materials to drop that off, it can be anywhere between $65 and $200. So if you don't get a chance to make it out today, that's okay. You can go to our website at ksat.com. We have a list there of the free monthly events that you could be a part of in the future. Reporting live on the South Side, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Alyssa. Time now, 841, 40 degrees out. Well, if you have ever had trouble waking up in the mornings and feel like you're not a morning person, mm. sleep specialists say there's a reason for that. Next, we'll have some advice on what experts are saying, what you should do to make waking up e early easier. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Look at that. Looks like a gorgeous day out there. A little cold to start the morning. What does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. You said you would tell the viewers right. what time you what you wake well, you up in the start. morning. Okay, well, I sleep in a little bit. Okay. For the weekends, right. I, my alarm goes off at 345. Okay. During the week, different story. It's like 145, 2 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. And you? What time did you wake up this morning, Max? So this morning I slept in a little bit. Which is? Uh, about 2.15. Wow. Yeah. It's, so here's a fun fact. 52% <laughs> of women, 60% of men are reportedly not morning people. I would say I've developed into a morning I've person. I've always been a morning person. All right. Studies show that genetics have nothing to do with the time of day we are most alert. And sleep experts from Stanford University claim that virtually anyone can be a morning person. Leslie Hudson has some tips on how you can transform. I'm a morning person. I think it's easy to switch, but it's probably like your schedule. You know, I was a night person. I have two alarms set. So if I sleep through the first one, I know that their second one is gonna be there. Sleep specialists from Stanford University claim that while we all have a genetic tendency to prefer morning or nights, anyone can wake up earlier and enjoy doing so. One way to better start your morning, pump up the jams. Starting your morning with music you enjoy releases dopamine in the brain, creating a happy feeling. Spotify's data team found the ideal wake-up song should build gradually, be positive, and have a strong beat. Some of the top Wake Me Up songs include Coldplay's Viva La Vida, St. Lucia's Elevate, and Avicii's Wake Me Up. While some need a caffeine kick, others may need aromatherapy. A study by Ohio State University showed that those who used aromatherapy for sleep improvement was effective for 95% of its participants. Lastly, drop the temperature in your bedroom. The National Sleep Foundation states that the best temperature for quality sleep and feeling rested in the morning is 67 degrees. With ways to make your morning more manageable, I'm Leslie Hudson. Sarah Spivey, what is your wake up time? Oh, my wake up time is 2.45. Okay. 2.45. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So nice and early. So I sleep in out of the group. Yeah, but Sarah's also here. Like, she has to way get earlier. She has you. to forecast. Yeah. And, yeah, and what, speaking of the forecast, let's talk about it. So I wanted to start with a look at the drought monitor across the state of Texas. Yeah, 53% of the state is in drought, but you see that bullseye? right over San Antonio in the hill country. That's an extreme and exceptional drought. All of South Central Texas is in some uh, form of drought with the exception of the coast. But again, it's this area in these dark red colors that are experiencing the most extreme and exceptional drought. Halotus, San Antonio, Bulverde, New Braunfels, Canyon Lake, Bernie, Kerrville, Bandera, Medina Lake, all of these areas struggling with really bad drought conditions. So unfortunately, though, as we look at the uh, upcoming week, our rain chances are very low. We've only got a chance for isolated rain on Wednesday morning. It's not going to help us out as far as the drought is concerned. And even beyond that, the Climate Prediction Center has given us a good chance to see below average rainfall for the month of March. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to see any rain in the month of March. It just means that it could be below average, and March is usually a good month for us rain wise. So it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing any relief from the drought in the immediate future. However, I want to talk about a few things. Let's talk about La Nina and El Nino. We have been so dry because for the first time in a long time, we have had three consecutive winters where La Nina conditions have been present. La Nina, El Nino is a type of oceanic pattern in the Pacific Ocean that really affects our weather. Usually during a La Nina winter, we have drier weather. So three consecutive La Nina winters. However, 
Here's some good news. Bye bye La Nina. Okay, La Nina has weakened significantly uh, from uh, what we can tell. And even there is the potential to be getting into El Nino soon, possibly as early as this summer, which could eventually lead to a potential wetter fall and winter. So all droughts come to an end. Usually droughts around South Central Texas come to an end with floods, unfortunately, but it does look like we are going to start to transition out of that La Nina weather pattern, which is some good news. Outside right now, though, it's cold and it's fairly cloudy, 37 degrees across South Central Texas, the metro area, 31 in Bandera, 32 in Bulverde, 30 in Kerrville, and we're seeing those clouds stream in here from the west. As we look at our KSAT 12-hour forecast, mostly cloudy today, we'll only be in the low 50s around noon and 59 for the high temperature today. It's going to be a cool one out there, just not as windy as the last couple of days. It's also very dry outside. Dew points are in the 20s and 30s. And so we're going to have chapstick weather throughout the day. Now humidity is going to rise starting tomorrow. You'll really feel the humidity on Monday and Tuesday. Temperatures tomorrow are going to be pretty comfortable. High temperature of 75 after some patchy morning fog. Humid and warm Monday and Tuesday turning windy on Wednesday and temperatures will still be pretty mild and we won't see another freeze anytime soon, which is good news. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 850, 40 degrees now. A four-year-old has gone oh. viral on social media after attending his first yeah, ever whoa. professional hockey game. What his mom is saying about all the viral attention and what people were asking them after the game finished. Have you ever been to a hockey game? Um, a long time ago, we had a small league, the Ice nice. Rays in Corpus Christi. Okay. <laughs> we had the Philadelphia Phantoms. It was like minor league hockey. Yeah, those were fun. It was a lot of fun. And when you go, you can get your face on the Megatron. So at a recent pro hockey game, a little boy got pretty much more attention than the hockey players. It's so cute. The four-year-old Michiganer couldn't figure out why the crowd was cheering for him. So video of him now going viral as CNN's Jeannie Mose explains. It was George's first hockey game, and the Jumbotron ate him up, Detroit Red Wing fans booing, opposing fans from Vancouver and cheering. Every time George came up, even if he didn't quite get it, the opposition, the home team. George finally cracked a smile and went viral. King George, they called him. I see a George bobblehead night. But it didn't give George a big head. It, like he didn't know it was about him. And just kept saying like, yes, red team's winning. Chelsea Miller describes her four-year-old son as shy amid a whirlwind of attention. There were probably at least 100 people that asked to stop to take pictures with him and high fives and can I get an autograph even. Mom says they were hoping his sign would get George on camera, but they weren't expecting this. Everyone just made it so special for us. University of Michigan hockey wondered, George, do you need a Michigan jersey for the next game? George's grandma here, and he definitely needs a jersey. George reminded one poster of Mikey. Remember Mikey? He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Now everyone likes George, even Vancouver fans. Ginny Mose, CNN, New York. King George, he is so precious. That was adorable. I love how he loved it. Yes. I love how he's like, oh, the red team's winning. Yeah. Of course they're cheering. Adorable. Good for the Red Wings in Michigan for making it a special night for George. So I'm now 856, 40 degrees out. We'll be right back. The Woody Museum is hosting a new exhibit this month called Antarctic Dinosaurs. So the exhibit is based on full-scale models of recently discovered dinosaurs. Guests will be able to examine real Antarctic fossils and learn how the land changed over time. The exhibit, you can see this exhibit from February 25th through September 10th in the Kathleen and Curtis Gunn Gallery. You can find tickets and more information on our website, ksat.com. I love the Witty. There's always such amazing exhibits. It's a here. beautiful museum and it's in a beautiful area. You can walk around that area afterwards. There you go. Time now, 8.59, 42 degrees out. We'll be right back for 9 a.m.